The word of God is not bound. That's uh, my heart today with the read in uh, 2 Timothy chapter 2. What a great, great move of zeal was in chapter 1 yesterday, you know. Steve exploded, not him, but the Holy Spirit exploded from his heart in that teaching. And sometimes that's all we got to do is have a heart to be a servant of God, to love people where they're at. Be strong, the subtitle when Thomas Nelson says, on the grace of Christ. And, and Paul's writing and he's talking to Timothy, but it goes beyond Timothy, brothers and sisters. It comes to our hearts. Faith comes by hearing the word of God. And as I said the last couple of weeks, these epistles are just so good. Put yourself at his feet. And a lot of the words that come out of these books, all you got to do is say, yes, Lord, I believe. Help me to do your will. Help me to follow your word. And Father, I pray for everybody hearing this. People that are not here today that are going to hear it on the internet. It doesn't bother me when people hear it. You go, you go back into the, the uh, YouTube channels. You see how many people. There's false teachers getting millions of hits. I know because I've been around those people. And it's, it's counterfeit. It's not even the real deal. You know? I had to have a sister like Margaret correct me one day. And tell me, she knows some of these people. And, you know, they put it out there that they're somebody, but she knew them. And they weren't somebody. They were just somebody that was in a big church. And just because you go to a big church, a little church, unless you're actively involved in the word of God and following God daily, taking up your cross, doing the spiritual disciplines, that God commands, he's no respecter of anybody. We all on the same battlefield. We're soldiers in the army of God, men and women. And I, I pray that everybody here can hear God's word this morning. It's one of my favorite little chapters to expound on a little. I don't even need a commentary. I'll, I'll go into the commentary at the end. But Paul, Paul starts out here. Be strong in the grace of Christ. Thou, therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. And I love the word grace because I'm, I'm a grace preacher. I'm a sinner saved by grace. We're all sinners. So we don't need to point fingers at people. We have to give that grace to other people that are struggling. Because Jesus said, Father, forgive them. And it starts with us. We got to forgive everybody. God, you don't love one another if you're not forgiving people. You got to get to that place because God forgave us. And the things that has that thou has heard of me. In other words, everybody was talking about what Paul went through being a Pharisee killing Christians and everything else, heard of me among many witnesses, the same commit thou to faithful men who shall be able to teach others also. And I, I just want to remind you, these are pastoral epistles. This is the only where in the Bible God talks about men in the church, gives us instruction through these books. The, the spiritual positions of men and women. And if you don't want to believe it, that's on you. But all scriptures for teaching, correcting, and training in righteousness. And you got to be able to teach. It says to faithful men who shall be able to teach others also. And there's the soldier that therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. And that's why we're all brothers and sisters, and we're all soldiers in the army of God. You know, women are very important. 
Everybody's got a position of servitude. Verse four says, no man that worth entertain entangled himself with the affairs of this life. Thank God for grace and mercy. We'd all have a problem. How many times do we get entangled in the things of the world? Nobody has to jump up and say, I know, I know, I know. We all know. God knows. He wrote it in the book here. He said, no man that worth entangled himself with the affairs of this life, that he may please him who had chosen him to be a soldier. That's why we have to take thoughts captive. Does God want me to do this? Or is there another thought coming through me that is not of God? Is the deception of the enemy. And, and for years now, I've been telling people, just read your Bibles. I don't care who's on a pulpit. You want discernment. You want wisdom and knowledge. My people perish for lack of knowledge. Read your Bibles. It's the only book in the world that's been authored by the Lord Jesus Christ. It's his word. It's not yours or mine. We're to follow it. You know, I said the other day, and I, I said that to, to little Justin. I says, you know, there's sisters in our fellowship. They got a lot of wisdom from reading the book because sometimes the devil uses other people to bring strife into our lives. Verse five teaches us this morning. And if a man also strive for the masteries, yet he is not crown except he strive lawfully the husbandman that laboreth must be first partaker of the fruits and the fruits come through the word of god the blessings always come from coming into obedience to god's word consider what i say saith the lord give the understanding in all things so if you're really into the word of God, what God's saying here is the Lord speaking to us here. He says, you're going to get understanding in all things. That's why I always like to tell people, relax, God's in control. If you surrender your life to Jesus Christ and you seek him diligently, that means your eyes are upon the word of God or your ears are listening to the word of God. You, you get to understand the heart of God, the mindset of God, and how God would want us to serve him, to walk with him. The book is full of instruction. It's whether we want to take the time to believe and put it into action. You know, as I said earlier, the word of God is not found. And the reason I said it is because the Thomas Nelson is just such a nice tool to have in anybody's arsenal because it's, it's got subtitles. It's got really decent commentary, you know, and you always got to take into the fact that a lot of people that wrote commentaries over the years never seen the fullness of what's going on in the battlefield in, in the level of, the New Testament saints have the power and authority to drive the enemy out, children's bread. We have the ability to take our filthy, dirty temples and, and clean them. God gives us grace that we can resist the devil and throw him out. Remember that Jesus Christ, the seed of David, was raised from the dead, according to my gospel. That's what, you know, he was a Pharisee. I always tell everybody to stop with all the rules and regulations and understand why God gave us a simple gospel. It's, it's hard enough to believe. It's easy enough to trust in Jesus believe in what he did because we all fall short on your best day you'll fall short i know i'm a sinner saved by grace and and the way i say it's because i'm not perfect i'm never going to be perfect i was so glad with sister bonnie last night 
because it was a long time. You know, I know Bonnie since 96. It's a long time when someone gets upset with you. You got to practice what you preach, every one of us. And we had a we had a great little prayer meeting last night. And sometimes that's all you got to do is to let go of the things that trouble us. Paul said, wherein I suffer trouble as an evil doer. That's that's so well coined in the read today. He says, wherein I suffer trouble as an evil doer, even unto bonds, but the word of God is not bound. Therefore, I endure all things for the elect's sakes, that they may also obtain the salvation, which is what? In Christ Jesus with eternal glory. There's only one way. Put your faith in Christ. You sin, I sin. In reality, everybody sins. Because there's none righteous, not even one. That's in Romans, brothers and sisters. That's why you need to read the word of God and get God's opinion, not yours or man's, God's. It is a faithful saying for if we be dead with him, you need to die with him, get resurrected with him because he paid the debt he did not owe. We owed a debt we couldn't pay. That was one of the reasons why I picked that song this morning in opening up because it's, it is a faithful saying for if we be dead with him, we shall also live with him. If we suffer, we shall also reign with him. If we deny him, he also will deny us. You know, great scripture to highlight and give to someone that's on the fence. You know, different believers. Once again, verse 12, if we suffer, we shall reign with him. If we deny him, he also will deny us. That's why whosoever confesses me before man, I will confess before my father in heaven. You know, scripture always rolls the same way. And that's why searching scripture uh, increases our faith. It comforts us, the word of God, because we're all sinners. Even sometimes in our best moments, we fall short with people we love, with our children, with other brothers and sisters in fellowship. Verse 13 says, if we believe not, yet he abideth faithful. Because he cannot deny himself. See, Jesus, Jesus is God. He's the creator. Even the enemy. I get a hoot when they tell me we're not leaving. It's our house. I get a hoot because of your your persistent in prayer and fasting. They know the truth. They know God's word better than you do and I do. And, and you just do what God tells you to do and stick at it. And you're going to see victory after victory in your life. I'm living it. I, I'm living a fun time just being a servant of the most high God. And yeah, like Dave said, you sound tired. Yeah, I get tired. I'm a human being. But when I am weak, he is strong. You quote scripture. You edify and build yourself up with the word of God. The promises of God are yea and amen. When he tells you he gives you and I power over all the power of the enemy, they don't have any power. He blotted out the handwriting on the wall. Believe the scriptures you read when you read your Bible. He must increase. Satan must decrease. You know how many times I made the demon say that yesterday? Because I have power and authority over the enemy when I'm battling. He must increase. Satan must decrease. Very powerful when you walk in faith, brothers and sisters. And, and why do I say that? Because now we're going to the, 
the final from 14 to 26, you got, there's two things involved here. One, uh, Paul's telling us on how to be a work for God's approval, and then reminds us from 22 to 26 that we have to flee youthful lust. I don't care who you are. Prior to Christ, you had a lot of lust. And we all know that's the truth. We're, we're never going to be the same. Once, once we cry out to God to save us, he does his part. Now we have to do our part. We have to take up the cross and follow him. And we're going to go through all kinds of stuff. And the enemy knows that. And the enemy is, is they don't sleep. People get attacked in their dream. People, people get so frustrated in dreams, they run around the false prophets and false teachers. Oh, I had a dream. Can you interpret it for me? Why don't you ask God? Why don't you get real serious with God? And God says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. You want to ask something? Go to God in prayer. How many people really do that? I don't know. I'm not a fly on the wall. I know that I have to read my Bible and do it. And this is the most precious time in my life. This is the best time of my life, the last 11 and a half years. It's a true discipline to stop what I'm doing. And just, I looked at my wife this morning. I said, oh, I got to go upstairs. I, I, I came upstairs. I got a letter. It came to the church from Brother Dave. I opened it up. I have an opinion on all kinds of things. You know, I've seen too many people go down rabbit trails following everything that they put their intelligence or their intellect into. I think we need to spend more time reading the word of God, everybody, and believing God's word. Why? Because today's reading, verse 14, of these things put them in remembrance, charging them before the Lord that they, might, that they strive not about words to no profit, but uh, subverting, but it says here, but to the subverting of the hearers, verse 15, the first word God says to all of us through Paul's teaching here, study. One word, study. You listen to Steve said, well, I'm going to, I'm going to go through this yesterday. No, Steve studies. And if you study, Steve looks up words. He expounds on different words with us all the time. Because he's very thorough with that word study. So thorough that he went back into the Hebrew to check out the different names that people. It came to the point where we were casting the evil spirits out because they were using Old Testament names when all you got to do is use the name of Jesus. But nobody studies. They just take what everybody else is doing. Monkey see, monkey do. And you want to be a, a soldier? That's how you get shot. That's how you make mistakes. And the word of God is very simple. It says study to show you thyself approved unto God. We're workmen. You could say workmen, workwoman. There's neither male nor female in Christ Jesus. You know, there's a difference in pastoral. God's got a, a straight up thing, the husband of one wife in, in the book of Timothy. But in the spiritual realm, women have authority. You know? When we were praying yesterday, my wife was like a pit bull. I find very few women that sit in a battle for two and a half hours. And yet people think we're not real. We're real. Sometimes people listen to their demons instead of, you know, the desperate get delivered. How many times we've got to hear those stories from people that went to HBC? It's not one time in the door. It's many times in the door. You even look at the, the humility in the pastor that's there that he just kept going until one day he got off the rug and the, 
that spirit that really had him bound was gone. I think that happens to all of us in our journey because he rewards those that diligently seek him. I get tired of people. Oh, I, I, I got demons. I got demons. I'll do something about it. We're here seven days a week. Person's got a demon. You know what? I can't pray with everybody, but I said, make an appointment and we do the best we can. We're not the deliverer of goddess, but we win. And you're going to see testimony after testimony. You know, we're alive and we're alive in Christ. Every one of us is a soldier in the army of God. Depends how much time you're in the battlefield. Let me go back to this. Of these things, put them in remembrance, charging them before the Lord that they might not scribe. Not about words to no profit, but the subverting of the hearers. Study to show yourself approved unto God, a workman or woman needed not to be ashamed, rightly dividing, rightly dividing the word of truth. Everybody wants to say, we do this, we do that. God does it. And he does it in meek, humble servants. I try to tell people all the time, you're going to get into the deliverance camp. You better learn how to discipline your body. You, you really need to read a book like Pastor Worley put out on that video, War on the Saints. You're not going to read it one time. I've had to read it many times. I'm still getting it. And I just, we just finished my eighth time is being finished. Seven, eight. I can't keep track because it's just like the Bible. I've been reading the Bible for 36 years. I'm still reading it, people. More so now than ever before. Doesn't matter what people think because the word of God is not found. I read that in the beginning of this teaching. But it says here that we're to shun profane and feign babblings. Those are the rabbit trails that a lot of Christians go down because they're not seeking God, they're following ministries. I don't care about any ministries anymore. I just care about what I'm reading in the book. I got enough things that can change my life radically to come into obedience that God tells us to do in, in the word of God. Shun profane and vain babblings, for they will increase. And what, what does it increase to? Look at your Bibles if you got it open. Unto more ungodliness. And their word will eat as a canker of whom is Hymenius and Philetus. Who concerning the truth, look what Paul's saying here. They erred. In other words, they made mistakes, saying that the resurrection is past already and overthrow the faith of some. I've watched that happen with modern Christianity years back with Harold Camping. I watched the other maniac right now who never got deliverance, Jimmy Swagger, turn around publicly the other day and say, Mike Murdoch is a good teacher. I wonder if Pastor Michael saw that video yet. See, I diligently study. You know a wolf by their clothing, people. Nevertheless, the foundation of God standeth sure. Having this seal, the Lord knoweth them that are his. If you're diligently seeking God and you're reading your Bible and you're trying to serve, then God knows who you are. He knows. Steve brought it out yesterday. We can't even imagine how many hair on your head, how many, you know, I'm losing hair, but, you know, God knows the hair on everybody's head. It's beyond So the simplicity of just opening your Bible and saying, yes, Lord, is a good thing for all of us. 
the Lord knoweth those that are his. And let everyone, everyone, listen to what Paul's saying here. Everyone that nameth the name of Christ, depart from iniquity. In other words, quit rebelling against God's word. That makes me look in the mirror and say, Lord, forgive me. I know everybody else is walking on water. That's why I always remind everybody, I'm just Charlie. I'm a sinner saved by grace. People beat me up all the time, but I'm saved by grace. You can beat me up all you want. God knows my heart. God knows I get up every day to serve him. God knows I stop what I'm doing. I get convicted every time I remove Justin from this, this prayer group because he's a person that needs help. Again, yesterday, I talked to him for probably 35, 40 minutes. And, you know, I ended, I said, Justin, I got to go. It's just like Robert. He sends me these things on uh, Spanish exorcist and deliverance people. I don't speak Spanish. So all I'm, I'm, I'm here in a foreign language. I can't even understand what they're doing or what they're saying. And yeah, God's got deliverance people in every venue, every language. That's why God relax, God's in control. But it says here, Paul speaking in 19 at the end, let everyone that nameth the name of Christ depart from iniquity. You can, you can turn that into a lot if you want to study what iniquity is before God. And, then, and, and this is where I've preached this the whole time I've been a Christian. But in a great house, there are not only vessels of gold and of silver, wood and clay of the earth, and some for honor and some for dishonor. Really hit me when I was a young Christian reading this for the first time through. My Bible, I've got it highlighted. You know why? Because in verse 21, Paul says, if a man, and you think about it, because woman comes from man. So when the Bible's talking about this, it can go both ways in my heart, because man's from woman, uh, and the two become one, and they procreate, they multiply. That's God's plan. That's how Everything goes on in his creation. But he says, if a man purge himself from these, he shall be a vessel unto honor. And the word sanctify and meet. In other words, you'll be used for the master's use and prepared for every good work. And there's a lot right there in those two verses because it could. God could be talking about you and I. And that God, what sanctifies us? The word of God. What happens when we come into obedience with God's word? We, we could be used by our master, our savior, our God, our king, our Lord. There's so many things that could come out of this. And he says, for the master's use and prepared unto every any good work. And that's where the gifts of the Spirit come in. And the Holy Spirit can operate through any of us. But there's some sanctification that goes on. And we come into obedience to what God's will is in our lives. And then the last subtitle, because we all had this prior to Christ. The subtitle at the end says, flee from youthful lust. Flee also youthful lust, but follow what? Righteousness, faith, charity, peace. Charity is another word for love. So I get my favorite little things right there. And these are the things that I get up to do every day. Faith, love, and peace. God says grace and peace throughout Paul's epistles. That's how the early church was motivated to re, uh, uh, 
reestablish agape love, they would bind and loose and they would loose the spirit of grace and peace. Grace is God's love. It's unconditional. I never understood it until I zeroed in on Father, forgive them. They know not what they do. And yet Christians have a hard time forgiving one another and forgiving themselves. Very powerful. Even recently, I was reading an article on how unforgiveness can really harm you physically. It gives the enemy ground. And, you know, the enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy. Listen to what it says here. I'm going to read this again. Flee also youthful lust, but follow righteousness. God is our righteousness, people. We have to put our faith in God. We have to have charity, love for one another. And we cry out to God, even in the, the warfare for every day, for peace, quietness, so that we can live a godly life. And knowing that they do gender strives, and then he adds in on verse 24 this morning, and the servant of the Lord, that's you and I, must not strive, but be gentle unto all men, apt to teach, and patient. You go back to Corinthians, you go back and restudy into the scriptures and search the scriptures. That's the fruit of the Holy Spirit. It's like Margaret said to me a couple of weeks ago, two weeks ago, I think, with my wife. And they prayed for me. And all you got to do is submit for prayer. God's sovereign. Once the seeds are planted and you correct people and you, you talk to people, believe me, God waters the garden. God makes us think. When we're in the quiet place, you know, that's why I like to play songs like I want to be more like Jesus. Jesus didn't open his mouth when he could have. He held this peace. But when he was in the temple and that was his father's house, well, our body's the temple of the Holy Spirit. I mean, you can you can really live your life through the scriptures when you're reading them. Servant of the Lord must not strive, but be gentle unto all men. Boy, did I need prayer for some of that, because with all the stuff and all the people I have to talk to a lot, sometimes you run out of patience. Sometimes you get tired of telling the same people over and over again, please stop. I said to Brother Justin yesterday, I said, when you're in our prayer group and I let you in, I want you to hear the word of God. I don't want you going, when we open it up for discussion, I've allowed him to talk. He goes down rabbit trails. I said, here, here's what you got to do, brother. Focus on the, what we're going to read that day, study it, and bring your opinion on what was being said that day. Then you're part of the ministry. We're studying to show ourselves approved that we understand the daily teaching of what we're reading. And sometimes, you know, we take stuff from commentaries. I, I'm a believer in, in the counsel of many counselors. And that's what you get when you, you got people that love the Lord and they sit down and they put their heart and thoughts into some of these commentaries. But when I listened to Pastor Wynn, when I was younger, he hit something that was really truth. That you, you have to study. And, and today, what I see is a lot of people that write commentaries never stepped into the battlefield of deliverance. They never stepped into Win Worley's ministry that God gave him on casting demons out of people. And I meet a lot of people, just like that woman that drove four hours round trip with two children, and the one child needs prayer. And, and you know, you have to have the patience to deal with demonized people also. You have to have the patience to follow up on people. 
It's not a one-time event deliverance. When you follow up on people, it, it shows your character that you really care about what they're going through. You're not living in that body. You don't know what people are going through. And the only way to win the war is to fight. The only way, the battle belongs to the Lord, but we use the word of God to drive the enemy out. You know, and I, I check a lot of ministries out right now. I talk to a lot of people because I'm trying to serve God. And I don't want to offend people, but people, you need to read the word of God. You need to put this word. I have to put it in my, into action in my own life. That means everybody's got to do their part. If you're going to be in a ministry like this, you got to be filled with the word of God. We learn that in War on the Saints. You got to be saturated is the, the word we use. And it says we got to be in meekness. Listen to what it says here in closing. In meekness, instructing those that oppose themselves. If God per adventure will give them to what? Repentance to the acknowledgement of the truth. Well, God's word is truth. And the truth will set you free. The more you acknowledge the truth in God's word, the more you will increase in your Christian walk, and Satan has to back off. Those are the rules. Devils know that because the word of God trumps their power, their kingdom. You know, I heard uh, a guy talk. And, you know, I'm, I'm investigating because this guy asked me if he could come and preach at a conference and he's on the Internet and I knew his father and there's no way I would have him preach at a conference at MOS. You know, because I don't agree with what he puts on the Internet sometimes and I've listened. I listen to a lot of people. And it says in 26 and that they may recover themselves. Those are the people that are demonized out of the snare of the devil and who are taken captive by him, not on their will, at the devil's will. And, and you know, God, whom God loves, he chastises. He allows the rules of en engagement are if you're slipping and you're disobeying God's word, and that's all the devil's got to do is get some ground in you. You're in a war. A little leaven ruins the whole loaf. Well, the word of God is not leaven. It's the truth, the way, and the life. You know, and I, I, I can't expound on that any more than what I do. I mean, in 2 Timothy, God's grace strengthens us and enables us to be faithful. To be faithful what? We're supposed to be teachers of God's word. We're supposed to be light in darkness. So if you're not in the word and you're not speaking the word, you're not doing what the beginning of this, you're supposed to be a soldier. A soldier. You go to war in a real war, you got to be trained up to go to war. Without the training, you're not going to go into the battle and you're not going to get the victory. Even a good example is in anything, and I'll go into the worldly thoughts on this, to, to, to be a, a, a fighter, you got to train. To be anything, to be a runner, you got to train. You got to build your stamina. To, to play sports that are really invigorating, you've got to turn around. I mean, I, I've met a lot of pro athletes prior to Christ, not many since I've been born again, because I stay away from the God of sports. And I try to minister gently to a lot of people because they're being driven by the things of the world. And I have that in my own family. And I see how my grandson is being driven since he was a little boy to work out. Yeah, he's got all kinds of muscle and he's tough. It's almost like what athletes do, boxers, all these people, even to the existence of food and farmers, workers. And here we are reading about 
we could be vessels today for God's glory. But we still got to do our part. If a man or a woman purges themselves, and every time I, I look at those words, and I, I think about the way I used to be, and, and how I was worldly and how everything I wanted, everything everybody else could have. Today, I could care less. God's taken that drive away from me and, and brought me under the word of God that it's more important to help people that are ensnared by the devils. Because that's, that's what unclean spirits are. They're fallen angels that God threw out of heaven and they're so mad the world looks at us like we're evildoers but we're God's elect because light and darkness can't get along people willing to live and die for Jesus real simple teaching here today God's grace enables us to overcome three great enemies and, and it's amazing because every one of us battles this. The world, the flesh, and finally, and they that may recover themselves out of the snare of the devil. The devil, brothers and sisters. God's grace enables us to endure hardship as we fight the Lord's battles so that we do not deny the Lord. When you really think about it, the word of God helps us to do the work of which we're not ashamed of doing it. There is no condemnation. There's no guilt. You just get up and do it. You know, God's word said, I give you power to tread over all the power of the enemy. You know, at this last conference, Brother Phil Walma was really driving that message home, kind of stuck with my heart. It was, it's really good. You know, God's grace helps us to get through all the hardships we're going through. It also helps us to battle for the Lord so that we won't deny Christ in our lives. It helps us to do the work that we will never be ashamed of. And deal with the problems, people of whom we are not afraid. And you can't be afraid in the enemy. All you can do with anybody is say, look, I'll take the time to pray with you. And sometimes, it's like I said to the young sister yesterday. It's the first time I ever met her. Very wonderful sister. And I said, you need to prepare for war. And, you know, one of the, the good things about Pastor Wynn Worley's booklets about deliverance, if you're going to travel and you're going to go for deliverance, you need to prepare spiritually. And I always tell people, Matthew 17, because your unbelief and doubt, this kind goeth out only. When you do your part, God does his part. I had to coin that because Dennis Rosa prayed with me many times over the years. And sometimes we would pray for a couple of hours. I mean, I did deliverance on Wade and Minnell at their home. You know, because God will use you anywhere. All you got to do is lift Jesus up. You know, you lift the word of God up and God shows up. Maybe, as the preacher Jonathan Edwards said, I took it out of a commentary. It said, grace is but God's glory. It's begun. And glory is but grace being perfected in all our lives. So, when all else fails, we all know we can go to God in prayer. Just like last night, you know. God knew that I needed to talk with Sister Bonnie. She called me a couple of days ago. Uh, yesterday, I was trying to get Jay Peterson because I have this thing with Jay. 
and, and it's such an easy thing. You play tag, tag in your head. Well, if you reach out to someone and they're busy, then they can, when they're not busy, reach back to you or vice versa. And we're all here, especially in this salvation ministry, as I've named it with the Lord many years ago. It's not about a denomination. We're non-denominational. It's not about controlling anybody. It's about the full salvation that every one of us gets if we follow Jesus. And, and this, the simplest thing I get out of uh, chapter two is that we need to clean ourselves. We need to put God's disciplines in our own lives in action so that we can help others. And, and the simplicity of the gospel is get the plank out of your own eyes so you can help other people. And people that are out there that are struggling, there's no reason to struggle. There's plenty of ministries everywhere, especially today with the internet, that you can make appointments. It, it's it's kind of hard to, to take 10 people in a, a prayer group and try to do deliverance on all 10. And I, I, you know, I'm an advocate. I've been in mass deliverances since I learned about them from Derek Prince and then from Pastor Worley's ministry. But people that manifest in mass deliverances don't mean they're all gone. Because it's a wrestling match. It's a war. That's why sometimes you see people coming back months after months or even years after years with the same manifestations. Hey, listen, when you drive a demon out, they're driven out. If they come back, that's because there's grounds. Whom the Lord sets free is free indeed. But Pastor Worley wrote a, a really good booklet years ago on holding and it was out of his other books. He, he just paraphrased this stuff into smaller booklets so people could read the booklet. Maybe you have a, a problem in that area. You're getting deliverance and you're, and, and weeks later, you're back in the same. And, and I'm going to tell you something about schizophrenia. Uh, you know, I know for a fact, it takes quite a while to get all those demons out. And if people think that there's somebody they need to just submit for prayer on a regular diet and it's little by little and if you go back and read Hammond's book pigs in the parlor I'm going to tell you I got a sister she you know I didn't even reach out to her I was talking to my wife yesterday that got freedom here many years ago it, it took quite a while and I'll, I'll never forget using Frank's book just going after the different spirits him and his wife wrote on the fingers of your hand. Multiple, multiple spirits. And sometimes it was so exhausting that the poor woman used to have to go upstairs in one of my bedrooms and sleep for 10 hours after four or five hours of deliverance. You know, I can't even imagine what it is with people that you got to pray that way on the internet. There was a time in my life where we were praying with people to the midnight hour. And there's very few of that really going on. You know, I, I don't have all the answers in deliverance, but the book does. War on the Saints gives us a, an idea, and that's where I'm going to close this uh, second Timothy today, the, uh, the study of the word. This is out of the principles of interpretation. The study of the word, we should apply both the spiritual and literal principles of the interpretation. The spiritual principles include prayer, Psalm 119, 18, cleansing. You know, if we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive our sins. And the illumination of the Holy Spirit. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verses 12 through 16. The principles are literally understanding scripture to interpret according to the mind of the author, the historical background, the contents, the basic rules of grammar. And, and they brought it back to Joshua. Joshua was promised success, but he had to meditate on the law, Joshua 1.8. He won that success 
when he conquered the kings of Canaan as a disciple of Moses and as one who had a personal relationship with God. He could interpret the law of God, understand God's will for his life. So if we desire the will of God in our lives, we must regularly and systematically interpret God's word according to to the proper meaning and and you know what thank god for study bibles that you could sit here and get something every time we come together here in this prayer group you know we got paul warned timothy of the difficulty of the ministry and he urged him to be strong in the first part of the read today in contrast to those that walked away. Faithful men were to be selected and trained to be leaders and teachers. Thus, personal discipleship was to be a vital part of Timothy's leadership. Enduring hardness, that means to suffer affliction. Paul illustrates this truth because he was a soldier, an athlete, he was a farmer, he was a tent builder all of whom suffer privation in order to be rewarded. And strive lawfully means to, to play according to the rules. And, and that's what the enemy is. You know, they're very, they're very legalistic. And, and, and the terms of engagement, you know, I went through that yesterday. You've got to get them to admit they are defeated that the written word, they hate the written word. You've got to use the word of God to battle the enemy. That's why in Ephesians, he says, put on the full armor of God. And, you know, you could take what I'm saying, whatever way you want, but what I'm illustrating, I, I've been around a few years and I'm in this ministry and I try to help everybody. And God helps them who help themselves. And if you're struggling, you need to pick up the phone, make appointments. If you, if you got a ministry out by you, I, I asked a sister last night where I could send someone if they're in Oklahoma. Because sometimes you got to be live and in color. You can't go to any ministry one time and one and done. Not with demons, especially if you got a house full, you know. Look in the natural. I got, a, I got 13 rooms in my home. I can't clean them all right away. I get to them little, little, little. And the more I pursue it, the more I get things cleaned up. Amen. I hope this message blesses someone out there. And, and I hope that Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior. And the simplicity of the gospel is ask him to show you, teach you. Ask him to save you. Because if you ask him that, he'll do exactly. If your heart's right, it's a done deal. And then you can open your Bible and begin to learn who Jesus Christ is. So God bless everybody. Amen.